Hi there, so welcome to this second video. So here we're going to work in this case. So in the deck of a slice that you then load, you should have this, this is a problem definition, okay, the IDO2 exercise. So let's do this problem definition. So basically this is this is important, the wind design of an actual airplane, okay? So we're designing for this one, this is the, the Piper PA-28, very good airplane, general aviation. So let's see, let's design this wind, or let's see is this wind that we have here is truly generates the required lift in cruise conditions, okay? We're designing for, for cruise conditions. We're only interested in the wind design. So uh, we're not going to talk about design of the tail. I'm going to show you something, but just wind design. So here we have the required information, okay? So we have the section of the wind is this airfoil the incidence angle okay so this is the structural angle remember this is a fixed angle in the wind so we have an incidence angle of two degrees okay we have the other angle which for the llt doesn't make pretty much uh, the, doesn't, the llt doesn't see the, this is fat so it doesn't make any different okay and uh, well this is a cantilever low wind so basically we have here the dimension so it's quite easy to compute the area and, and the aspect ratio okay so it's Okay, base times height, and you have the area, and then the aspect ratio is span divided, uh, span, square span divided there. Yeah. The surface, the grass surface. Remember that in the surface, we also con uh, we also take into account the contribution now of the of the section of the fuselage. Okay, so we have all the information to design the wind. So the questions here are, okay, so from the POH, this is the pilot operating handbook. Okay, this is the, the manufacturer gives you this information. So this airplane, the maximum takeoff weight is a thousand kilos. Okay, maximum cruise speed, you have it here, the definition. Okay, then this is the maximum operational speed at sea level, and then the stall velocity. Okay, below this one, will we'll, velocity will stall, and then the service zone is this high. So remember, we have, we, you see that we can reach different velocities. Okay, also service sailing, higher altitude, different density. So everything needs to be, we need to take into account, okay, all these values to, to correct the leaf. Okay, so higher altitude, lower density. So something we, we need to correct for that to get the required leaf. So the questions here are using the LLT method and ignoring the diameter angle, everything you are asked to determine if this wind will generate the required leaf to fly at an altitude of a thousand meters and at maximum cruise speed. Okay, so here we're assuming also that we, we are at cruise conditions, the angle of attack is zero. However, remember that we have this uh, setting incidence angle of the of the wind. Okay, so this is a structural angle that we have. So before moving into X, A, XFLR5, let's go back to the Excel worksheet. So also you should have this, this Excel worksheet that just to show you that is the second one, additional examples. As you open this one, you will see that here we have already the problem definition, okay? So we put all the values here, okay? So CL, okay, to pi, then the angle, the angle of attack, zero leaf, okay? So this specific airfoil have this angle of attack, okay? So your, is your, you don't believe, you just run egg foil, okay, for zero leaf, and you will get this value. Okay, we have all the information, aspect ratio, area, okay, geometrical information. This is, in this case is easy because it's a rectangular wind. And now we just go and compute coefficients. Okay, so these are these equations. We so divide again four stations, we get the coefficients, we solve for we, we assemble now the, the matrix, we solve for the coefficients, and we get these coefficients. Always leaf information is contained in the A1, so we compute it like this. So that this is our leaf coefficient. Delta to compute the induced drag, okay, we get it like this, and then the slope of this one, and now we get to answer here. So we compute everything in coefficients, non-dimensional. Now we give that a physical meaning, okay, by computing the leaf. So we have the leaf equation, and we say that the weight of this airplane is here, 10,000 newtons, 1,000 kilos, okay, 1,000 kilos style gravity, okay, is the force that you need, you want to, to keep. So 10,000 newtons, you put it here. So let's say that you are flying, we say 100 
a thousand meters. So here you have the value already a thousand meters. Your density will be like this. You put it like this and see that you just solve for the equation. So at the maximum cruise velocity, so as you go into your problem formulation, it's 60 meters per second. Yes, it is generating the, the lift and actually it's generating more. So remember that here we're just uh, solving for this. In reality, when you, you assemble your, your whole, you put together your whole airplane, you add also the tail, and it's likely that this tail is going to generate a downforce just to balance the airplane, so your lift, total lift will be lower, okay? But see that, yes, this wind designed, it produced, generate the required lift. So it's not any very fine, it's not a super fancy method, it's very simple, but it works, okay? So there is no need to go to so sophisticated methods such as CFD and stuff like that, okay? At the beginning, at the initial step, this method, it works, it's very good. So we have the solution here, and actually here we solve for the velocity for the required leaf, and actually it's telling us that, okay, instead of 60, you can go 55, and you will have that required leaf. Okay. By the way, I also didn't mention here that you also you can compute the downwash. That is the, the correction or the wake. Okay, so you have all the information and you can get the, the, the downwash. So let's go and also answer the second one. At what angle of attack you will need to fly if the curve velocity is kept constant at 55 meters per second and you climb to 2,000 meters? Okay, so let's go here, 55 and we climb to 2,000 meters. If we climb, means that density is lower. And here we have already the value. It is one. So if you put it one, see that you are not regenerating the required leaf. Okay, so let's go back and let's go and let's say that, okay, let me put four there. So remember, it is actually two because we have the incidence angle. Okay, so here I, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't do that division of incidence angle plus angle of attack. So taking into account that here two, okay, an angle of attack two uh, here corresponds to zero because we are adding the incidence angle by definition. Okay, if I go four, this will be. Uh, angle of attack of two. Okay, so it is angle of attack minus your incidence, incidence angle is your effective one. So if we put therefore which equivalent to two, see that we have here too much. So let me go to three, which is one degree angle of attack. If we look at that in terms of the fuselage, okay, it means that now the fuselage is one degree, okay, over the, the horizontal line. So four degrees is two degrees, okay. So because you have that angle here at the root. So we go to three and see that in three, that is, voila, we have the value 55, 10,000. And then you can answer the other, the other question. So this one, what will you do to generate the required leaf at sea level, max, cruise speed, and at an angle of attack of zero, okay? so. Zero means you, we leave it at two there. So we leave it here at two because we have the incidence angle. So see that if we go to those conditions at sea level, this one will be 1.225. Okay, and this one is 60. So what would you need to do? You are already generating the, the lift. So it's, so nothing, okay, but have in mind that as you're generating more leaf that, that, that the one you need, you are going to, to have a vertical acceleration, okay? The airplane will go up. So probably if you want to keep at level fly at the same height, you likely will need probably reduce this one, okay? So this is it. Say so that very, uh, something that maybe you, 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 you think is complicated, it's quite easy, we have the Excel workshop here to do that. Also, I gave you some scripts in Maglet and Python where you can do more stations, but you can understand well what is happening using that script. So at this point, let's launch uh, XFLR5 and see how to set up this problem. We saw that it works, that win actually is okay. So when you launch uh, XFLR5, okay, you're getting this wind. So I will first design the wind, okay? But also you first can can load the airfoil and, and get the polars, but I will go for the wind. So I go here, okay? And I want a model 
when I'm playing this sign. So here we don't have anything, okay? Or probably we have a default airplane if we go to this sign. So you, we go into plane here, define a new plane. Okay, so it is proposing this, okay? And from starting from this, we can add more stuff, okay? So if you want by plane, you add the second one. Here we don't have access to the fuselage. We need to use another method, but you can add everything here. So we don't want fin, we don't want elevator. We only want the main wing, okay? We're interested in designing the, the main wing. So we go here and now you press define. So okay, here we're selecting what we want to define. So you can call this one, I don't know, you give it a name, PA28 version one okay define and now we give the geometrical characteristic so if we go back here see that we have everything here so the same i span that i need to define in xs xflr5 is 4.6 so see that zero 4.6 you have it there then the cord it is 1.6 meters so 1.6 here, 1.6 here. Then I don't have ox offset. Okay, 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 okay. So here is 4.6. Okay. And I don't have offset. Remember, this one is the one that is going to give you this sweet angle. Okay, so put it to zero. No, the other we don't need that one and twist we have a physical twist there okay this is a geometrical twist there is two degrees that at the root okay and it's the whole wing that have that that angle that incidence angle so the whole wing is put at two two degrees fuselage always horizontal then we need to define the airflow but see that we cannot choose anything because we haven't drawn that one but this is already the definition of our wind. So see that here we have the area and aspect ratio. So if you go back to the to your Excel worksheet or you can do the, the, the computation manually, you will have area, okay, uh, aspect ratio and surface. See here, 475, 1472, you have it there. Everything there. Area, aspect ratio, and more information. So this is the wind that we design. So see that we have also one section. But for instance, you want to design a wind with more sections. Okay, for instance, the first section you want it to be rectangular, and you want to see the second se section with taper. You insert one. So I want it to after section two, and see that there, you can add the new body. So you go here, and then add the new core. Probably this one will be 0, 08, and then you go. So you get the idea that if you want to design an elliptical wind, you will need to add many of these sections and give the right angle until you get that. So you can add as many as you like. Okay, it's up to you. I will leave it like this. It's rectangular, no need to, to do that one. Maybe if I want to, to, to control the geometrical twist or add aerodynamic twist in different section, I can add another section and control in that particular section, okay? But there is no need to do that. Okay, we're okay here. We have our win, but we need to give the airfall information now. So I close here, save, see that you have your win there with no cross section. So now we go back in module and you go back and you go here. Eggfoil direct analysis. So now we go to 2D and we're get, going to get the polars of the cross section of this wind. Okay, so recall that in our problem definition, we have this airfoil, okay? So in the, in the data that you have, you should have that airfoil as well. So if I will recall, now let me go back, okay, here, you have this folder and then inside you have this, air, this, this folder, airfoils. So if you go here, see that you have your airfoil there, okay? Six five four fifteen. This one, six five four fifteen. This is the one that we need to to use. The format it is exactly the same as in X foil, okay? So as you recall, this is exactly the same. So to read this file, you go here. Sorry, you go file, open, look for that file. So it's Air Force and we want to read this one. Open. Then let me go 
here, for instance, you go here, see that now you have your airfoil here. You load the airfoil and see that you load it with this name that is already in the file. You can also rename it. So now that you have this information, you have this physical airfoil, you can run, okay, your, 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 uh, you can run the, the analysis to get the polars, okay, at a given Reynolds, okay? But it's important that we need to know what is the Reynolds of the wind, okay? So let me go here to win, win and plane design, okay? So see that you have all the geometrical information, and let's say that I want to run this analysis at 60 meters per second, you can compute it, okay? But if you go here, define analysis, type one is fixed speed, see here that you define velocity. Okay, by the way, probably you don't see this symbol here. This corresponds to alpha and beta. This is size slip. Okay, I don't know why you don't see that. <laughs> or I don't see that. So I put here 60. See, that is telling me that this wind, the, the Reynolds, okay, is 6.4 million. Okay, so I need now, remember that we need the 2D information at the specific range. So we need to run for this specific value. So let me go back, okay, module, exploit data analysis, and I go here in analysis. I will do a single analysis, define an analysis, okay? And you just put your Reynolds there, Okay, by default uh, here in, in, in this program, XFLR5, the number of iteration is 100. Here you can control the transition parameters, you want to add the correction for compressibility and everything, you, you, you have it there. So I want to run for these ones. Also, you can give it a name to that specific polar, it's up to you, I will leave it like that. Okay, you define the problem, and now you just run here. Okay, so see, you go here to your right, so we want to run a sequence. Probably you have it like this. If you want to run a sequence, select sequence and lag in F, X file. So from minus five to 25, a step of one or probably a step of 0 0.5 and select all, all these boxes. Okay, you want to save everything. Analyze. And voila. We have all the angles here. So you click, you will see different values. This is the CP distribution. You go here, you have the polar, okay? So for instance, right click here, you have different options. So you can show only associated polars and you can play around with these options, okay? What you want to see is you want to hide. Here you hide everything. If you want to change the color or symbols, you have everything there, you now styling. And also if you go into the plot, right click, and you have everything here, okay? So you can export the current airfoil, the current polar. So probably it's a little bit more fr friendlier than the eggfold, but I prefer eggfold. Change the type of the graphic, okay? Also, for instance, you go into graph, you can see just two graph, four graph, all graph. I like to put it like this, all graph. So see that this airfoil have the drag bucket, a very nice polar. We run at a, a Reynolds 6.4. So see that here you have all information safe. Reynolds 6.4, all these angles. So let's say for instance, that I want to run now another analysis at a Reynolds of two millions. You put it like this, two millions, you Reynolds, analyze, and off you go. You have it there, another Reynolds. Okay, we, have, we study already Air Force, so we know what what, what is the dependence now? What happens when we reduce the Reynolds? And here we have the results. Okay, so let me change the color here. Lower Reynolds, okay? So see that now we have, let's say in memory or buffer, we have two Reynolds numbers. So all this information that you have here, it is saved when you go in 3D, uh, automatically the software will access this, okay? So I will stop here, you get the idea. Later I will show you something else, how to run many Reynolds. So if you want to run, for instance, now 2.1, 2.2, you can define many analysis or you can go bash analysis and see that here you can give a table of Reynolds. So you can insert everything manually later, I'm going to show you that, okay? 
So we have these two Reynolds, save the project, okay? So in your homework, I will ask you to send me this file. So you save it as, and you put it whatever, and I will call it here, uh, test one, and save it in the format, okay? And this file you need to say to send, send it to me. You can reopen, you go, and here you have your select and you will reopen your, your file, okay? So I recommend you also very often to save it because sometimes it is a little bit unstable, so sometimes it, it, it crash. So save it very, very often. So now we go back to the to the 3D model when I'm playing design. Okay, I'm here, or plane, current plane, and I want to modify the wind. Okay, so we define it, define the plan for, but I want now to modify it because I have the airfoil information. So see that you said it here, we have only one airfoil. Okay, if I run for another airfoil, you will have it there. So later, I'm going to show you and all of that. So see that now you put the airfoil and this is your actual wind. And when you load this airfoil automatically, you are loading the information that you have there, the polars at that Reynolds number, all those polars, okay? So that we have that, we save, and at this point we're ready to go, okay? So we need now, okay, see here that you look at the screen, you will see that you have all the geometrical information, okay, very important. You have the Mac, everything here, aspect ratio. So we can run an analysis. To run analysis, you go here, analysis, define analysis. So the analysis, okay, you have different tabs, okay, and the, you have different modes to run, okay. So you have here fixed speed. This is the one that we're going to run because let's say that we know already this, this velocity. It's telling you, okay, your maximum velocity is 60 meters per second. You have your estimated Reynolds number and you run for that one or another velocity. But also you can run for, if you don't know that velocity for a fixed lift. So you fix the mass of the, of, of the body, of your whole configuration, airplane or only the wind. And then you are going to change velocity, but also angle of attack just to, to, to get that fixed lift. Okay, later in another case, I show you that. Also you have fixed AOA, so this is this one. So you fix your angle of attack and you will be able to change velocity, sequence of velocity. And this is size leap uh, for more for stability. For us, it's not important. So this is the one that we're going to run, okay, for most of the time, okay. Then analysis, these are the methods that you have implemented. So see that you have different methods. We're focusing L LLT. I look at that the LLT by default is viscous. You have it there, but the other methods are vortex lattice, and you have the option to enable or disable that correction, okay? So this is a correction that you can enable or disable. I recommend you to use this one, okay? Disable this option, okay? These are very, very robust methods, but all these methods are, are implemented, no, it's potential with no, they're full in basic. So this is something that developers of this software you know implemented. It's a, it's a trivial correction, but I have to say it's not very accurate. Okay, so run it in visit. But we're interested in the LLT. Okay, so just we'll enable the here sometimes. Uh, here in inertia, for instance, if you want to define the weight, here's where you define. So this will be your target leaf if you put a weight there. So well, we want to use the plane inertia no, of what, whatever you design there. Reference dimensions, computed automatically by the software, all this stuff. Aerodynamical data, so this is just viscosity and density. Okay, so you can, this this is a, a table that you have in the software, so you just can get the altitude, give the altitude and temperature, and this will be corrected. And extra data. So remember that if you run an analysis of full in visit, you can add the CD0 or whatever drag. So this is just those additions to, to your CD total. Okay, see that here, you just keep adding, okay, so you know those values. So for instance, you know that the fuselage produces this drag, the pylon produces this drag, the nacelle produces this drag, uh, the aerodynamic failing produces this drag, excrescence that drag is this much. So you just keep adding here, okay, it's just that. So in this case, let's run for this basic configuration. We save and see that after we define our analysis, now here, like in 2D, you, have, you can run a sequence. So see that we are interested in wind design here to design the wind for cruise conditions, okay? So that is our 
our condition, okay? Cruise condition. So usually cr cruise condition, you need to go like in the wind that we go like from minus, minus eight to 25. Here it's just probably minus four, I think. From minus four to 10 is okay. A step plus one or 0 0.5. So let me put here 0 0.5 and analyze. Okay, probably this one to initialize LT and then analyze. And this is this is it. Okay, so see that I launch and I get in this message. It's telling me that okay, the the fly envelope okay, it, it is outside of the values that I computed. So remember that in each section we're computing the properties okay at this range, but then somehow at the software it needs to interpolate. So it's not enough to give one value. We need to give more values. Okay. So you will very often see this value, don't enter into panic. This only means that you need to add more information to cover that, that, that Reynolds, okay? And this is what I, what I say that it's recommended to add steps of 100 cells. So, so 6.3 and 6.5 should be enough. So let me go back to egg foil direct analysis. So see that I have 6.4. Let me run another analysis. And I will run it at 6.3. Okay. Analyze. 6.3, we have it there. And let me run another one. Okay, analysis 6.5. Okay, so now I have enough data that it can interpolate between 6.4. So it's given that error, probably it's numerical precision, no, that it needs more data, but it, I think it would be enough to add this. 6.5, analyze. And you have all the data there. So see that you have all the curve. Remember that here you click the X and you can hide difference or you can change the color. So let me put this color and then you show. So this difference is very small. So see that the, this curve, they, they, they overlap. Okay. So it makes no difference that doing that, but this software is kind of asking that now. So it's very small differences. I'll save. Let me go back to win. Okay, so now you have all that information and it's a like personalized. See that now you have a solution. It managed to interpolate. You have that error. Okay, so see that we run from minus four to 10. Okay, so we want to see the polars are located here. Okay, so let me go to polar first and see that these are our polars. Okay, so here in graph, see that you have a few scenes that you want to two, three, four, I already mentioned that. Right click here also, you can soon, soon fit. I will press R and it will adapt to the screen. No, it will scale automatically and see what, what we have. Okay, for this win. Okay, we have this. So we added the, the, the incidence angle. Okay, so see that this one is generating kind of what we wanted. Now it's a little bit here, 13,000, okay? At zero AOA, okay? So from the fourth section, we, we got it 11,000, if I well recall, okay? So there is some different, but see that it works. Very fine. So for instance, if this is too much, just reduce the velocity, or uh, actually the problem was also density. If we recall, it was uh, a thousand meters, okay? So thousand meters density is 1.1.1. So let's redefine the problem. Define analysis, aero data, and is for an altitude. Okay, so it's thousand meters. And here you have your density and corrected viscosity. Save. Okay, we want to save it with the same name or overwrite. And let me rerun. And voila, see that now with that correction, see that it is lower, density has a strong influence, and we're there, okay? So this is all your IRO data, you have it here. Then as you move here, this one, you can see for each angle, you can see this is the, in this case, this is the induced angle. So let me go to zero degrees, I press R, Okay, fix to screen and see that 
from the mix section to the tips. Okay, see that this is the downwash. Okay, so this is the angle now that it will create that thick vortex. So see that at these strings is very, very, very large. So there is where you have all the vortex. Here also now again, graph, you can use two, four, all graph. I like to use one. So see here that you have one, two, three, four, six keys. You just press two, one is induced drag. Two is total angle. Three is CL, so let me go here, I press R. So this is the span-wise leaf distribution. So it's called from the lectors that this is the one that follows now. Then four is the total leaf. Okay, let me press. So this is your actual leaf force in each section. So remember that you will need to integrate this one to, to get the other leaf. But this is the one that you, you have there and see that you, this curve get there in gray. Let me change the color of this one also, color and put it like this. This represents the ideal leaf distribution. Probably you can see this one by default, you need to enable, to enable this one, right click and you have it here. Show target curve and you can enable or disable. See, disable, show target curve and show elective leaf distribution. Okay, so this is the ideal one. I want to use the max local CL, okay, be careful. And this is it. So our idea when designing the wind, already, we already know, let me go back here, that we're producing the required leaf. There is no problem, okay? There is no deal there. The problem now is that we want to do things in an efficient way. We want to reduce the induced drag component. And to reduce that one, we need to get closer to this elliptical leaf distribution. So now what we can, we, what we can do is just play a little bit with the geometry take just that. So you have access to your geometry, you can start to, to change, I don't know, the, the, you can add washout to control here, or you can add another section here to control a little bit more here, okay? So it's up to you, but this is the idea. First, be sure that you generate the leaf at your desired conditions, okay? Then adjust your distribution to have the elliptical one, but always check that you, you still are generating the, uh, the, the required leaf. Uh, all the things that you should be careful, I'll always talk about this, this moment. For the moment, you, you should be very careful, or for you it's important that the airfoil that you choose is an airfoil that does not generate too much moment, okay? Because then to balance the, 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 this configuration, the airplane, we need to add a tail, okay? And the tail will, in this case, generate downforce, so that also will, you will re reduce it, the, 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 the total lift. So do, you don't want to use you know, a, a configuration that have too much uh, negative moment that will require a lot of downforce to, to balance. And also it is ideal, but it's something that is also difficult to, to achieve, that your maximum LD, it is the same as your cruise angle. So let's say that our target cruise angle is, is zero. It is ideal that the maximum LD is also at zero, okay, for performance reasons. But it can be tricky to get, but there are some, some, some designs that you can get it or you play around with the twist and everything. You will see that you, you will manage to twist it a little bit, uh, to shift it a little bit to, to the right, and you can put it even closer now to the design condition. But let's say that in our case, our target is 10,000 newtons. So see that by looking at this, curve is we need to be, to be about minus one. And actually the, the maximum LD, we're very close. So this is an optimal condition. Probably I don't like that we're at minus one. Okay, but if we manage to shift it to one, it will be better. Okay, so you go angle of attack of, of zero, which is the optimal one that we should aim. But this is already a good design. So also try to keep note your cruise angle, something between minus two and two, okay? That is that is a good value. So this is it, this is how we get it. So now that we have this curve is always, you want to, to right click, remember right click, you can save this screenshot, you can export this data, okay? You have the current polar for instance, and I think export results, okay? And you save that data in text format. So let me show you here, uh, current polar, Export results and I put it in the desktop. Desktop. 
and I have it here open and see that you have your data there. Okay, so you see that for each angle you have CL, induce, uh, viscous, CD, these components are no computing mo moment, you have everything here, okay? So let me go back here. So now we, we look at here, we look at here also, you can get from this one so different, see that different angles, you have different distributions, okay? Then probably here, I know, you have the animation, okay? So it's up to you there, okay? And the other one that I want to show you, this two, this is for stability, we don't need to do anything here, and this is also to show you CP, also we don't need to do anything there. We go in this one and we can see the whole airplane configuration, okay? So see that we have the option here also to visualize some information, so see that you can see leaf. This is just something visual, okay? Some people li like to, to have this visual reference, okay? For us it's more than enough this, okay? But here you can have those vectors. And for instance, induced drag, and you have here also this one is telling you where where you are producing more induced drag. Okay, so kind of this is that doesn't it's not a did indication, or you don't know you don't have any scale to know how much you are producing here. To know that one, you should come here and plot down those distributions. Okay. So you have induced drag. Also, for instance, you can know your moment. This is pitch down or pitch up. So in this case, you will see that it's rotating pitch down. You can have the viscous drag also. You can visualize that one. Remember, it's a non-linear method. So see that you have also that one. And see that, as I say, that the, the, the induced drag is a very large component. See that it's almost as large as the viscous drag. Okay, but however, as a designer, we can directly add on the induced drag. We can reduce it, okay? Instead, the viscous drag is very difficult. It's related to, to the surface, you know? So the only thing that we can do there is choosing a, a laminar, a natural laminar flow airfoil and designing you know, a very clean wing with no interference, nothing to, to reduce that one. But that, that is difficult to control. Instead, the induced drag it can be controlled okay, by using good, good designing practices that we addressed in the review. So this is just to visualize you know, those vectors. Okay? It's, not, it's not that important. For us, it's much important. You can leave it on. For us, it's much important, these distributions. Okay? So now that we have this airplane here, Let's do another one, okay? But another one with a different airfoil. Okay, so we have this one. And let me say that I want to duplicate this one. So see that I go here, this is the whole airplane or the wind. Duplicate, and I will call it V2, version two. Okay, I duplicate it. I don't want to redo, redo all the design, okay? And now let me go back. So there you are going to have all the definition already. So if you have, Okay, I can hide that one. Let me go back to direct analysis and let me choose let me choose another another airfoil. So if, if I go here into design, see that in design you have NACA foils. So this is like an egg fold four or five digits. So let me choose a 2412, 100 panels, and there you go. Oops, I think it's going to crash in my uh, here. Yeah, so as I say, very often you need to save it, okay, and let me go here, let me launch again, so I save it, but I didn't save the, the latest one, okay, so probably, okay, analyze, okay, I have a solution, let me save, uh, let me go model and analysis and not airfoil and let me choose an airfoil here, 2412, okay, now I have it. So see that sometimes mysteriously crash, I don't know why, so see that this is the six digit and the new one so see that they are different so let's see what happens with this new one so as we did for this one let me save it we need to run for this Reynolds number so i go 
analysis, but now let me show you the batch analysis. Okay, you can do it manually or batch analysis, you have this table. So in this table, you go, let me go, six million, six point uh, six, six one, and you just fill in this table. Unfortunately, you need to fill it manually. It's not like you put what the extremes and then uh, it, it's going to add the, the, the values in the middle. You need to do this manually. Okay, this is the only thing that I don't like, but it's not a problem. Put it here, then 6.4, and let me go up to 6.5, okay? And then this one I can erase. So if you want to erase, you click there and delete, delete, or if you want to add a new one, you have there the options, and it will add. Okay, so, I delete everything I, you ha I have here, six design points, Reynolds, six million. Also, if you want to add the Mac, no, uh, Mac number, you can add it here for the compressibility correction. Here you have the transition points. So that's all. You define your batch analysis, select your airflow. So be careful that I want just to run for this one. See that also you can run in parallel as you have different. So in my case, I'm using six cores. Okay, there is no problem. Define your angle of attack from minimum of minus five, maximum 25, these steps. So basically what it's doing is that for each Reynolds, it's running all these angles. So Reynolds run up this angle, Reynolds run up this angle. Also, as we are running in parallel, we we'll launch everything at the same time. So, well, there are already fast computations, so it's, we don't want to make, makes no sense not running faster, but that's all. You could have done the same manually. Okay, define analysis, run one at this, at this, at this, and that's all, okay? So this is just to make it easier. Here in advanced setting, you can access this stuff for 100 iterations, you want or you change that one. Okay, so let me run and see that very fast, we have everything, okay? And so you go here, see that you have all your Reynolds, okay? Automatically save, and now you have the airfoil data and you can use it. So if I go back to win and plane design, okay, now let me duplicate this airplane. Okay, let me go here. Probably it crashed previously because of that. Let me see. Duplicate, I want to call it B2. Okay, we have the duplicate, I save it. And now plane, I want to modify the win because I want to use the new information. So see that now I have this. So new airfoil, or we can add the aerodynamic twist, okay? So, but I want just this, my design with a new cross section. Let's see what happens. So the, the performance of this airfoil is not as good as the CD6, or we think, let's see what happens. We save, save, go here, analysis, define analysis, the same, this is the velocity. We are sure that we're covering the Reynolds numbers. Analysis, nothing else. We have the here. Okay, let me define at the right altitude. Okay. Right value, safe. And at this point, ready to go. Analyze and see that the new airfoil, actually the performance is much worse. Okay. Well, not much worse. Okay. But probably would be better in terms if, if I want to have Okay, so if I want to have my cruise condition at zero, it, it is better. But if I want to have a larger angle here, no, when in, in CL zero, it's better to, to use the other, the other airfoil. Okay, but see that different airfoils, we get the, air, the, the same behavior. And see that in this case, it's the, the decided behavior, no? Zero angle here, the LD correspond to the maximum. This is ideal. This is what we what we want. So let me make the difference here. Also, that, let me change the color. See that the new one, okay. Also, it produced more drag, okay. So here, the big difference in this drag, okay. I think, uh, okay, viscous also, because this one is laminar and see that for large production of leaf, large angle of attack produce less Left drag. So remember, you can always come here, define graph, 
and for instance let me see the viscous component okay let's see the difference and see that clearly you see that this one here you have your drag bucket okay instead the other one doesn't have it and you can go for instance uh, define graph settings and induce drag okay okay i choose the, the run axis but uh, 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 okay let me let me change let, let me put it right so define define graph should be shell induce here okay so it's difficult to see but maybe yeah it's difficult to see since that they are also overlap okay actually yeah you should they should okay so this is how we proceed okay so again you can come back here and you can get access you click there and then you have the angles okay remember that you you expand and you go to zero as you want to see all your arrows and this stuff and all so this is mainly see that also this is trans represent the transition when the transition happens okay and you have access to that information because you are running egg full in in viscous mode and you have all the transition location so important since that also i want to point out so recall that you have all the coefficients everything but there is another value that is very important and a good indication of, of the if you have a good win for for the optimal leaf distribution as you look at here okay you have this number here efficiency okay so this is the win efficiency so this is that coefficient that if it is one corresponds to the perfect elliptical contribution okay so you want to have this as close as possible to one however be careful that this is a, a nonlinear method iterative methods okay with some corrections sometimes it might happen that it get, gets greater than one that doesn't mean that it's a super win it's just something numerical okay but it's, it's, if it gets greater than one it means that that, that, that is close to, to to one okay but it might happen okay but our goal also is you want to to check a value to see the efficiencies the win okay the, how close you are to that elliptical contribution just look at this coefficient okay so if i go here now let me select zero see that and let me go to local leaf okay this one okay so this is the version two, is the NACA double O, the NACA four digits. And we compare, we look at the other one. Okay, so see that the leaf distributions are the same. There is not a large different there. Okay. I'll probably, let me see, there is something that it shouldn't be. Okay, boom, boom, boom. For instance, let me check one. Okay, induce drag and induce drag okay this one there is a slight difference there so there are small differences okay so total angle earth so if i look cl for this is the the cd6 and cl for the other one so there are some slight differences okay well there are there are there okay so you can compare your wins, your distributions, and so on, okay? So this is how we proceed. So let me do something else just to show you. Okay, let me save, okay? And we can, the last modification, let me create a new analysis here, duplicate version three. So in the version three, what I want to do, I go plain again, and let me modify a little bit the, the geometry. So see that we have this twist or the settling angle, okay? I don't want to put that, that angle, okay? So let's see what happens now. So you define there, let me save. We don't need to do anything because we, this is the Reynolds, so define your analysis, everything okay here, Aerodata K, okay. analyze. And there you go, we have the new value. Let me change the color okay and see that that settling angle that we added the the fixed geometrical angle have a strong influence so now see that to arrive to that condition of 10,000 newtons you need to fly at an actual angle of attack of two okay previously we were at zero but remember that we have that geometrical angle okay so it is also important in terms of comfort of the passengers. Now you have the fuselage, you, you want it to, to be as close as possible to zero. Maybe two makes 
no not much different but our goal is always to get now as close as possible to zero ideally remember also that you want to have you now your crest condition also where you have the maximum cl the ld ratio so see here that this is also the case and also see that this is the trim okay we trim is very important so the trim when you intersect this line here the zero moment line means that the aircraft is in trim conditions to have the perfect trim condition you need to be here at the same cross angle or something around the, the, the cruise angle in this case to trim the, the airplane to be in an exact equilibrium you need to go something about minus five okay so this this is not balanced but it's just the win okay so when we add detail that i'm going to show you next video you see that everything starts to to balance okay so this is the case that here no settling angle and now let me do another one let me duplicate with twist okay geometrical twist and probably we cannot also aerodynamic twist okay so i go here save plane mod modify the wind so let's say that i wanted the root this airfoil and i want to add on a small twist twist i want to go from minus two uh, sorry from two to one okay so at the root is two and here is one always i have my angle of attack and reference to the fly fly path okay this is a physical angle remember so i define that one and let's run this new win this is okay save every now and then analyze and probably we don't see a different let me choose symbols this one and new color here and there you, okay there we see there we go so see that now by adding so the gray one was the first one with the city six only this one now we have the aerodynamic twist but also geometric twist okay so see that is good behavior okay now this one is trained at ten thousand what we wanted okay and see that also good properties here and here also close very close to zero condition okay so see that that is small modification okay was enough to go to that design condition but what is important that also we need to check here so if i go to zero and let me go and now this is radically different like we have seen so see by adding the you know, the twist geometric and aerodynamics see that now we're much closer to that ideal uh elliptical leaf distribution okay so let me go back to this case so see that in this case see here that we have this problem here this is a problem you are producing here this is a excess of leaf okay that you're producing and this is responsible this excess here is responsible for the large induced drag instead in this case much lower okay here maybe we have a problem but it's much better than the previous one so this is already an optimal win this one that we have we are producing the required leaf and the minimum here we have the lower induced drag very close to 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 the elliptical leaf distribution so for instance what we can do here in this case here in this section that it's not close to that one maybe we can add another section here you can say at two you can add another section and add a little bit more of twist to go closer so let me show you that okay so see that it's not that difficult let me go also back here and again you can see everything you now in this case you select your angles but see that in zero our efficiency see that is is one Okay, so it's actually larger than one. Remember that there are numerical problems here, but you already see that it's much better than all the other cases that it was 0 0.97, whatever in this one, we're getting closer. So this is our goal, okay? So let's do the final modification. So let me duplicate this one. I call it five, save, I go to plane, define new plane, uh, sorry, not new plane, uh, modify, okay, so already exists, so I don't need to create a new one. And what I want to do is add a new section, okay, I, ha I want to have more control, so let me no. click here, insert here, 
and see that insert and I have this section here. We say that we want it at to that section, okay? And see that now that you have that section, you can control tweet. So for instance, look at that. If I put six, you're doing that, okay? So here you go from two to six. So probably it's not, it's not very nice, okay? So let's put 1.5. And let me, I will leave this profile there. So see that I'm using this city six in all this section here. And then in the outer section, you are doing the aerodynamic twist plus that geometrical twist. So let's see if this, this modification has an influence. Okay. So we define the analysis, save and we analyze. We have our plot there. We check the polar. Okay, we have the polar. So let me hide here when you deselect that X, you're hiding all the others. So I want to have these two, okay, the last two. And see that actually the new one, it is an improvement of the previous one. So we added the new profile. See that we get better, likely probably we're going to improve a little bit this distribution. And voila, see that much better okay so we go let me go here previous one which is already better than b1 b2 b3 now we go to b5 b4 and look at b5 very close to that one okay so this is this point this is probably you can do better you can add more sections so see that you have to probably here you see that at four maybe you don't like this one so you can control a little bit more there okay you can be a little bit more puntal there and control but this is already a very good distribution and see here that your efficiency is one so at this point you can stop so i see that we designed it this win okay and now we improvement so probably you can say to manufacturers the cherokee now the piper corporation that this is not a good one. You can add some better twists to get something much better, but they have their reasons to have that wind that already works. So this is it. This is how we design our wind. Always remember to save here and then, well, you can do all the post-processing that, that you want. Remember that always right click here, you have many options. So I invite you to play around with this option. So if you want to see the log file of your simulation, you have it there. So see that everything converts. So probably sometimes you will have that error that is outside the envelope, meaning that you are missing a Reynolds. So you need to go back to 2D and run more, more, get more Reynolds numbers. Okay, so this is it. We're here, okay. And okay, I hope you got an idea, idea how to use. As you see, it's not that difficult, okay. So play a little bit, control. In this case, we use this rectangular wind, that which is not the ideal. So in later videos, I will show you the taper ratio and everything that we can control even better. Okay, so like the Siebel's wind, uh, uh, Siebel's wind. So that's all for this video. In the next one, I will show you adding detail. Okay, so we have the case here at detail, but we're going to address a little bit more stability. Okay, not, not very related to aerodynamic design. So thank you for your attention. See you next video. Bye.